How's it going friends? Welcome to another To The Twin Cities Live. We're running about 18 minutes behind schedule. <laughs> uh, what are you gonna do? Um, we have this new office space. This might look new to folks who are familiar with the channel. And this is a big part of why we didn't do a live last week and are also late today because we are still setting a bunch of stuff up. I don't, wouldn't get too used to this setup um, because it mm, wouldn't make sense. When you walk in, if this was a setup, this would be wild, but it works for today. Um, so these twin, you know, these videos are a, a, a deep dive into specific neighborhoods that we already are looking at on the channel. So today we're talking Apple Valley, Minnesota, um, a place that Steve and I grew up in. And if you are familiar with the channel, again, you know that we do virtual tours, which we already think of as sort of a deep dive into these areas. Um, but then this is like a further companion for people who are really, you know, big into research, for people who are, I don't know, obsessing about their move in a positive way. Um, and really want to dive into as many places as they can and have like as rich of an understanding of these places as they can. That's what these live videos are really here for, as well as just keeping people updated on things that change week to week, uh, like market conditions and such. So, um, yeah, my name is Jesse Lynch. I run a real estate team called To The Twin Cities, hardest working real estate team in the game. You can check out our website, tothetwincities.com. Um, we have a contact form there. If you uh, have any interest in working with us, contact form there that you can fill out in like 30 seconds or less. Again, if you want to work with us, you can just shoot us an email to info at tothetwincities.com. Um, they lead to the same inbox, so totally up to you how you do it. No preference at all. Um, but yeah, we. Uh, this is what we do. We help um, folks who are first time home buyers who live in the Twin Cities, I guess repeat home buyers too, of course, naturally. Um, we don't discriminate too much, but this YouTube channel hopes to be a resource to first time home buyers in an educational sense, folks who are relocating from anywhere, different city, state, country, planet, uh, universe, um, to the Twin Cities. Um, and and we you know hope to be a, a resource in sort of the sense of education about the area, um, not just sort of the, the real estate process. And then now we actually just started adding these lives, which is sort of a um, supporting element to both of those things. And we also just added home tours, um, which I'm actually very excited about. They're a lot of fun to do. Um, and again, I think it sort of piggybacks on that same sense. We help sellers, of course, because we're real estate agents. Um, and now we can um, have a place to showcase people's homes that we're selling um, and show them off. And we use sort of the skills that we've acquired in video and on this YouTube channel to help show off people's homes. If you haven't checked those out yet, you should, because we have, I think, three up right now, and they're all very, very cool. Um, and yeah, so we have, you know, a very like, wide reach in terms of the things that we're trying to do on this YouTube channel, but they all uh, hopefully apply to the folks who are consistently watching this. We're not trying to add a bunch of stuff that, you know, uh, the people who have been tuning into this channel have no interest in. That's not something uh, that I, you know, like the idea of. I want it all to be pretty consistent. And if you've been watching for the last two, three years, that you still think the new videos, these lives, and the home tours are valuable to you um, and are not just something that is for somebody totally different. If that were the case, I think I would start another channel, but um, that hasn't been the feedback so far. So anyhow, uh, if any of this appeals to you, do me a favor, do yourself a favor, subscribe to the channel, and uh, click that little notification bell so you can see every time we put these videos out and so you can see when we go live, right? So for example, if we're 18 minutes late to live, then uh, you will get that notification and be like, oh, they actually did go live. They just were running a little bit late. Um, these lives are also always available after we shoot them um, for eternity, unless we, do something really dumb, I guess, <laughs> then maybe we'll delete it. Um, but yeah, appreciate y'all watching. Um, I think quickly I'll dive in to the map um, and talk through uh, 
just a little bit of background on the Apple Valley, which is the neighborhood that we're diving into today. Um, and actually, it's how live is this? Why don't we Why don't we go to Steve first for uh, a general market update? Um, about what we're seeing in the market because we say this every week but it's dynamic and it's changing very quickly right now uh, maybe more than ever what's up everybody my name is Steve Wilk uh, if you are interested in anything that I'm talking about here if you have any questions anything you'd like to follow up with if you're interested in working with me uh, please reach out Steve at to the twin cities .com, Instagram Steve Wilk Realtor uh, so we're talking general market update for the week ending 3-5-23. And I phrased it that way to make things a little bit easier. Hit me please when we're looking at this graph here. Um, <clears throat> so uh, last time that I, I missed a couple weeks with the lives here, uh, vacation and uh, we skipped one, uh, Valentine's Day, etc. cetera. Uh, but last time I was on here talking about this stuff, uh, I mentioned I think maybe one of the best ways to to get like a really really um, or like uh, compile data that's really helpful in understanding what's happening in the market right now is to take a look at showing data right so what that means is how many showings are being requested in the Twin Cities uh, that'll give you some idea of buyer competition in the spring market I mean I think I'm, I'm sure everyone who's at least you know tangentially or somewhat or very interested in real estate has heard about how you know these situations of crazy um, multiple offers you know homes going you know five ten fifteen percent over list price uh, you know many tens of thousands of dollars in some cases and it's oh my gosh it's so things are so crazy out there and yes that does happen in certain you know circumstances but uh, I think it's um, helpful and instructive to kind of look at the entire market and like instead of just like anecdotally for me let's just use me for instance i had i submitted an offer for some buyers this weekend uh we were competing with 18 other offers so 19 total uh we did not our offer was not accepted that you know to some of you might be like oh my gosh how could you know how could it ever get you know this crazy out there uh, that's one story that happened to one group of buyers and it happens relatively frequently but hopefully this data will show kind of um a little bit uh more a wider picture and give you like kind of a more understanding of how that happens. So uh, what we're looking at right now here is um, all showings that were requested across the MLS. So all of Minnesota, most of them, you know, the vast majority are going to be within the Twin Cities uh, for the last week. So ending in the 5th of March. Um, pay attention here to the gray bars. The gray bars are 2023. The blue are 2022. So if you notice in every, so these are the price ranges, 200 or zero to 200, 200 to 250, 250 to two, uh, 300, 300 to 400, et cetera. Um, 2022, there were way, way more showings uh, in March, in early March of 2022. Biggest reason for the decline, obviously, well, maybe not obviously for people who aren't as familiar with this channel, but uh, the rise in interest rates is what's the biggest thing that's different between uh, this year or this time this year and this time last year. So significantly fewer showings. But what's more interesting, in my opinion, is how things have changed from now from a month ago. Uh, why has it gotten so much more competitive, it feels like, in the last four weeks? Uh, so we're going to take a little bit closer look at that. So gray bars are the last, are 2023. If you'll notice, the, the highest number of showings across price ranges is the 300 to 399 price range. When we're talking to new buyers and we're talking about, you know, depending on what the price range is, Competition is a lot different in what we kind of refer to as like the the first time buyer um, kind of market, which would be usually that you know between 200 and 400, and the the bulk of it is that 300 to 400 range right now. Highest number of showing so right here 5,000, a little bit a little bit over 5,000. So and it, it does kind of look like a bell curve, right? It really drops off when you get to 500 to 600. And then for even furthermore, as it gets higher. But so if you're in that 500 to 600 price range when you're looking for your home, you're going to see a lot less competition than you would if you're in the 300 to 400 range. This graph kind of shows that, which we all kind of know as agents when we're out in the field looking at you know helping our buyers look at homes. But to see this data really like like okay, well that makes that that correlates to what we're seeing when we're out there. Um, so things like I mentioned 
shortly before. It does feel like things are really starting to get more competitive in terms of um, when you're submitting offers, trying to get offers accepted, especially in that you know kind of 250 to 500,000 price range. Um, let's take a look at what this looked like just a week ago. So we're going to similar looking graph. Um, the the curve is similar. That 300 to 400 range is still the highest. We're looking at the gray bars here. Uh, but the amount of showing is really decreased, or I guess it's increased between that one week period. So um, <clears throat> this week or this week ending uh, three five, it was five thousand or um, sorry five thousand three hundred and sixty. What was that right? But five thousand one hundred twenty five. Sorry about that. I'm getting my figures messed up here. Up from three thousand eight hundred twenty four. Uh, that's an increase of. Uh, Sorry, 34%. Okay, so that 34% increase just in that one price range there. Um, and, but yeah, as you can see, it kind of goes across all of them here. So that's within, that's just in one week's time. Let's go back a month. So this is the week ending February 5th. Now the dis distribution here is a little bit more even, as you can see, the 300 range, 300 to 400 range is not the highest amount of showings. Um, and it is a little bit more evenly distributed between 200 and 500. Um, but the grand total of the grand total of showings at the you know a month ago in that week was 13,720. This last week, 19,280. So an increase of 5,360 more showings, which is a 27.8 percent increase just in one month. So. When you're wondering, you know, when you're thinking about how, you know, competition has changed just in one month's time, this is the biggest indicator to show that that, that it is actually happening. It's not just anecdotal when you hear, you know, oh my gosh, you're competing with other buyers right now. It's so difficult to get an offer accepted. I think so. that, yeah, no, that's, that's really fascinating actually. And, and yeah, it's always nice to see data that reflects what you're doing. You know, which, and this is very much what we're experiencing. We're seeing, you know, um, just so much more like action than we had been seeing. Um, we have a listing that is incoming soon right now. Um, that uh, <laughs> we have a listing that's incoming soon right now. Um, that's in that three, it's a list of 360, which was pretty pretty well in that like uh, first time home buyer range you know that like really the sweet spot the most action spot of the market um, and it went coming soon yesterday um, yeah today's Tuesday yesterday and we're already at like over 20 showings scheduled for when it comes active on Thursday so it's rocking it's also a beautiful beautiful house um, in a really good price range so um, which I think don't say too much. We'll talk a little bit more. <laughs> um, don't say too much. We have a video on our YouTube. So if anybody's seen it, we have a video Yay. already. Um, but um, yeah, I think that that's super helpful. I'm very curious to know uh, in the comments, do y'all uh, find that helpful? Um, is that what you're here for? Uh, I think it is, and I think it's quick enough that a lot of people are like, very interesting to know. Cool. Let's you know, and then on to everything else. But I'd love to know in the comments thoughts on that. Um, let's go to the map real quick. Um, the uh, we're talking Apple Valley, okay? Everything you need to know about living in Apple Valley. Um, here is the Twin Cities Metro, quite obviously, um, and Apple Valley is uh, one of the southernmost uh, suburbs. Um, it's probably a, what you, you would consider a third ring suburb. Um, and now Lakeville and Farmington are just, you know, another, another ring south of Apple Valley. Um, and like I think we said at the, st at the start, um, Steve and I both grew up there for literally our entire lives. Um, we went to the same schools. Um, and uh, it was a great place to grow up. Um, it, this is obviously fairly biased information, but I really, really enjoyed growing up there. Um, maybe I had little moments of angst because it felt boring, or you know, like like it wasn't like living in the city or whatever. But um, Pretty common teenager yeah, feeling. <laughs> yeah, show me a you know, show me a fifteen-year-old who didn't think that. Um, 
And yeah, um, but you know, a really, a really great lifestyle. I live in kind of the, actually Steve and I live relatively close when you look at the whole map of, um, of Apple Valley. Um, I grew up in this uh, southern, like southwestern most corner. Steve lived uh, slightly further north, but not really that, <laughs> not really much further north. Um, Actually more east, I'm like Levon there. More west, right? Oh, west, sorry. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> uh, but like a little bit more north and a little bit more west. Because um, I was just, just east of Garden View. Okay. Yeah, um, and, but like all the way by the southern border at Long Ridge Park. Shout out to Long Ridge Park, shout out to Apple Valley Water Tower. Sickest sledding <laughs> hill ever. Um, and yeah, Lackalon is a, a cool lake, some beautiful houses there. Um, uh, Nick is gonna dive deeper into, you know, what's going on for your lifestyle if you are living in Apple Valley. Um, and, you know, where are you shopping? What, you know, I suppose what, what are, what, what, what is it going to feel like when you live there? Um, but we had a comment, interestingly enough, on an old app. We have two Apple Valley virtual tours out. Um, we had a comment of somebody being like, oh, you hardly shot east of Pilot Knob. I can tell you grew up on the west. But I'm like, dude, Pilot Knob is like the... <laughs> Eastern one eighth of Apple yeah. Valley, like sorry, yeah. that's being generous. Yeah, yeah, like, um, but yeah, I just thought that was kind of funny. It's like, well, like, most of Apple Valley is west of Pilot now. Um, yeah, okay. that's a good indication, though. It's kind of hard to see where Apple Valley ends and Rosemont begins. Yeah, if you're just kind of you know driving around. There's not like a clear same with Lake demarcation. Yeah, yeah, and Lakeville. I mean, there you know there is right. It's Diamond. Diamond Path Road is the eastern border, but it's like, it doesn't, there's no point where you're like, I'm in a different spot. Yeah, it doesn't feel different. Yeah, yeah. and Lakeville's similar, in like 160th is the border, but there's, you know, eh, there's maybe a little bit more of a, um, a clear line at 160th, I guess. Um, the homes are a little bigger and more McMansion-y, like just south of, of mm. 160th. Um, sure. And I, that isn't a derogatory term, just like a descriptive term. Um, and uh, yeah, shout out real quick and then we're gonna let Nick dive into this. Uh, but shout outs to um, Quick Trip number 406. <laughs> okay. Do you want to do the same thing where you're just like mapping so people can get an idea of where some of these things are located? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah you talk about them and I'll pull them up. I got my, I got on my iPad here. Okay. Oh, uh, you, you got yours? Or do you want me to? I, it? No, do it on yours. Okay. But like, I'm just using mine as reference. Copy that. Cool. Uh, hope everyone's doing well. Nick Post here. If you'd like to work with me, at Nick at tothetwinsities.com or you can reach me on my cell phone six one two seven zero eight eight nine ten. Happy to help with whatever. Uh, cool, like Jesse mentioned, we're gonna be diving into kind of lifestyle, amenities, what you can expect living in Apple Valley. Um, if you've watched our virtual tours, Apple Valley is very much one of our quintessential suburb, suburban hubs here within the metro. Uh, would you call it Southeast or just South? I say straight South. Straight South Metro. <laughs> it's a St. Paul suburb. Cool. It's in Dakota County? Yep. yep. Cool, good deal. Um, so that being said, um, I'm going to try and be as interesting as possible, but just going to kind of rattle off some of your amenities and things to do, stuff like that. So um, that is all to say Apple Valley is very self-sufficient. You probably won't really need to leave town for much, um, depending on what you need. So as far as general stores and things like that, some of the, the things that you would expect in a, in a suburban setting, you've got Sam's Club, Target, Walmart. Best Buy, Menards, and Home Depot for your home improvement. So all your uh, stuff that you would need for stuff around the house. From a health and fitness standpoint, there are a very wide variety of gyms. Um, from Lifetime Fitness, your more health club style, um, Anytime LA, as well as Planet Fitness, all the way down to um, Orange Theory, more of like a group fitness type setting. There's also multiple CrossFit gyms that are more so on the northeastern corner of Apple Valley. And then in the neighboring Lakeville, there are also Pilates and boxing clubs. So if you like to be active in a gym setting, plenty to choose from. 
Um, let's see here. Actual healthcare facilities, there's plenty of them down in the Apple Valley area. There's uh, lots of clinics. I didn't see a real major hospital unless I'm totally off base. If you guys know one, off the top of my head. Probably. More of your major hospitals are going to be in the cities proper, but um, Minnesota is also very known for our quality healthcare. Just throwing that out there. It's a big. <laughs> it's like Fairview Ridge is the closest. The that one in Burnsville. Yeah, probably. So I've got U of M Health, Fairview, Alina Health, Health Partners. There is a Planned Parenthood down there as well, and a Minnesota Mental Health Clinic. Um, in addition to that, for uh, any of your pets, there are two animal hospitals in the area as well. So Apple Valley is very well equipped uh, for any of those types of needs. Um, from a restaurant's perspective, I didn't do a ton of individual naming, very similar to some of the general stores that I mentioned above. You've got your Chipotle's, your Raising Cane's, your Noodles. It's a lot of um, kind of chain restaurants, which is what you would expect in a lot of the, I would call Apple Valley a third ring suburb, yeah? Mm -hmm. That's yeah. kind of what you get all around the metro. Um, there's a few here and there, but that's kind of a lot of what you see down there. Do you guys have any favorite places that you'd like to plug? Shout out to Jade Island. It hasn't been open in years, but that, <laughs> <laughs> that's a Chinese restaurant when we were in high school. So not helpful, but I need to do, uh, get that out there. Didn't the, dude, didn't the dude's family we went to school with? Yeah, Spencer Zita. Yeah. If he's Shout watching, what up? Shout out Spencer Zita. Um, hey, uh, yeah, uh, I, I guess, um, what's that? There's a place that I, like, for like my mom's birthday, we go out to, um, and gosh dang it, I can't think of it, uh, the <laughs> tavern. Um, Which I have on here, the tavern bar and grill? Yeah. So for bars, uh, you've got the Crooked Pint, which is kind of uh, a chain uh, bar. There's one downtown, there's one in Chaska as well. Cool place to hang out, Cowboy Jacks, another kind of chain uh, that's around here in the Twin Cities. Yeehaw Bars, Tavern, and then Wild Bill's Sports Saloon. Um, so Is Rascals could, still open? Rascals was in there. I didn't want to rat off like all of them, but there's... <laughs> Actually, Rascals, my, uh, my sister is very, very good friends with the owner. Um, and that's like a, such a long standing. I think there's a place called Celts too. Does that sound familiar? Uh, that's actually in Rosemount. Oh, is it? Okay. Celts cool. Irish cool. Bar or Irish Pub or whatever. Irish uh, Valley Diner. Um, Panino Brothers. Nino's. Uh, there used to be one in Ian Prairie closed. Um, RIP. Um, so continuing on um, for uh, coffee joints, um, you've got a little bit of everything for our East Coast folks. There's a Dunkin' Donuts down there. Um, otherwise, you've got a handful of Starbucks. You've got Caribou, which uh, is kind of a Minnesota version of Starbucks, I guess, maybe. Oh, yeah. You could say that. Minnesota staple. Yep. And then there's also a Dunn Brothers, and there is a Brugger's Bagels down there. So plenty of places to go and grab coffee. But again, you're noticing the trend. A lot of these are very corporate. Your mom and pop joints are going to be uh, fewer and further between than they are in the cities proper. Uh, from a grocery standpoint, really great variety as well. You've got Aldi, Hy-Vee, and Cub, which are all relatively in the same realm. Hy-Vee has just started to creep into the metro in probably the last decade, I would say, mm -hmm. um, which I was a big fan of, uh, being that I was you know, going to school in Iowa. Iowa. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Their, their buffet was killer on Sundays after, you know. Anyway, uh, there's a fresh time down there. Yeah, after studying, long Saturdays of studying. Uh, there's a fresh time down there, and there actually are a, a handful of uh, cool, uh, like, ethnic grocery stores. There's Latino's Depot, the Mantra Bazaar, uh, Apple Valley Halal Market, and Doveport African Market, which is bordering on Rosemount, but all these places have really stellar reviews. So some really cool places to get some uh, different groceries than just your run-of-the-mill stuff that you're used to. Valley Natural Foods, had some friends that worked there in high school. Yeah, yep. Bradford. Uh, Yep. That one's never worked there? Oh, for like 16 years. Oh, dang. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Holy moly. What's up, Bradford? Uh, <laughs> Shout out Bradford. Yeah, Valley Natural Foods for sure. Happy birthday, Bradford. Happy birthday, oh, Bradford. Bradford. Another Apple Valley. He's a Lake Girl boy now, huh? Right? Yeah, cool. Which is supposed to happen that thing. True. Coming soon. Um, so, moving on, gas stations, which is obviously very important, uh, even if you work from home. <laughs> People gotta gas up. You've got a handful, but uh, a lot of familiar names. We've got uh, roughly three speedways down there, four holidays. Shout Dude. out Steve. <laughs> <laughs> my, my claim to fame. <laughs> I love that. The holiday uh, on Cedar uh, is dope. 
Yeah. That is a good holiday yeah. by the movie theater. Holiday's great. Yeah. yeah. I, that was my favorite gas station in Chanhassen too. I'm it's no you. quick trip, but yeah, I get it. Yeah. <laughs> there are three quick trips. I think quick trip has the best uh, deli or grocery. They have great options. Uh, there were a handful of shells and then one BP kind of on its own on the eastern side. There were others that were kind of bordering on Burnsville, Lakeville, and Rosemount. So these are all somewhat in the area. And then also, I mentioned Sam's Club earlier. You can also get gas there somewhere to Costco. So you need a membership to go there. Uh, one thing that I don't think we've really covered in some of these other cities that I touched on briefly is public transit in Apple Valley. It is a little bit further out. Um, I wouldn't say that our public transit here is super robust. It's definitely there. But when you're getting further out, it's definitely going to be more of a bus centric system. We do get a lot of people asking about the light rail, specifically heading out on the western side, which has been put on pause. But all that is to say, um, the Metro Transit Authority, in conjunction with the Apple Valley Transit Station, run the Metro Transit Red Bus Line, which uh, has many different routes. So let's see. Just a few things to do that I touched on, didn't go crazy, but, um, and you guys might have some feed feedback on this, but there's the Family Aquatic Center by Eastview High School. Did you guys ever go there? Didn't mess with that very much. Okay. I once played a battle on the bands there. Really? It's obviously so. seasonal, but uh, that is open this 2023 season from June 8th through August 25th, roughly, uh, depending on weather. You can get seasonal passes there for $110, or a day pass is $13 for everyone 12 and above. Um, also, the Minnesota Zoo is on the northern part of the city. It is the largest zoo in Minnesota, as far as I know. Um, for sure. Haven't been there in a while, but it's a really nice facility. Um, day passes there range from $14 to $20, and that is excluding parking. So it could be a pretty affordable family day trip if you wanted to do something like that. Um, and you can also get an annual membership, which vary from $65 annually for an individual up to $300 for um, family and friends, depending on what tier you go for. But I know that's a large attraction um, in that area. Also, uh, one of the largest parks is the Alla Magnet Park, mm. which is on the western side, bordering Burnsville, if I'm not mistaken. Shout out, spent a lot of time there playing Ultimate Frisbee in high school. It's a huge, beautiful park that offers a lot of different activities. There's also a seven acre enclosed off leash dog park, uh, Alla Magnet Dog Park. It's and a good one. Yeah. yeah. Other than that, that's one of the largest parks. Um, to the north on the Egan side is Lebanon Hills, which again is not strictly in Apple Valley, but that's probably the largest regional park. Otherwise, uh, are you on Google Maps right now? Yeah. Apple Valley is one of these suburbs where there are just tons of small little green spaces. If you look at the map, no matter what neighborhood you're in, you're probably a, a few minutes from even just a local neighborhood park. Yeah. Um, tons of, which tons is awesome. Of there's, a, there's an ample amount of green space in Apple Valley. so. Let's see. Okay. Uh, last but not least, uh, Valleywood Golf and Events Center, which is very near to the Minnesota Zoo. It's actually one of my favorite golf courses. It's a beautiful municipal course, very affordable. It's roughly between forty and sixty dollars to play a round of eighteen, and uh, like I said, that's not bad for a really well maintained course. Um, very heavily wooded. It's a, it's a fun time to get out there and play some golf. Sweet. Yeah, there were no other courses in Apple Valley that I saw. So, and that's again on the northern side, uh, very near to the zoo. That's also by Lebanon Hills. It know, is. is yeah, that there's a huge green patch on the map there that kind of all yeah. that stuff is near nearby. So there used to be the the uh, municipal uh, like Valley Golf Course or whatever, uh, off of One Fortieth and. There was one in Rosemount too that I think and might Garden have gotten View. shut down. But. This thing, uh, it, but it, but it's there. It's a new development actually, mm. um, and there's like patio homes and stuff going in here, um, which I think is going to be a cool spot. Like when it's all said and done, because it's kind of a cool like hilly uh, little little piece of land, um, and and it's nice. It's going from a closed down and overgrown golf course and that would be like you know really beautiful really beautiful homes and it's really close to valley natural foods so, so in conclusion apple valley is a beautiful suburb i think both these Thank gentlemen you. would attest to that it's got everything that you would need it pretty much touches all the bases 
One thing I'll just chime in is that I would say it is very walkable in the sense that it's by and large a very nice place to take a, a leisurely stroll through your neighborhood. We get a lot of folks asking about walkability uh, to like a coffee shop or something like that. Uh, Apple Valley I would say is definitely more of a driving to your amenities type situation. So mm -hmm. Or biking. Yeah, or biking. But um, yeah, that's all I've got. Cool. Um, yeah, make sure I'm not, you're not looking at my <laughs> computer. Um, yeah, um, let me actually, let me dive into this map a little bit more. Um, Steve, feel free to back me up on some of this. Yeah. Um, so at, we talk about this in the virtual tour. Um, there's there's like a few commercial hubs in, in Apple Valley, two, probably two that are uh, more, prominent and one that is like clearly the most prominent it's probably pretty obvious where that is mm -hmm. um, 150th aka county road 42 um and cedar yep. um is this whole situation is where like um there's a target um there's a, a walmart over here um and just a ton of different things cub foods um which is like a more like one of the mill grocery store kind of warehousey kind working of. man's grocery store yeah yeah <laughs> the one I grew less up and less so too. dude i swear <laughs> uh best buy they do have a ton of stuff though um that there's best buy um among other things it's it's very much like the commercial hub a lot of your errands will be run right around here um bogart's actually and uh, apple place bowl yeah Thank you for shouting that out. Yeah, man. So many hours. So much time <laughs> spent here. Um, and it's a great bowling alley. Um, and yeah, I was in a bowling league in high school. Whoa. Um, yeah, that's pretty good. What's your best score? 279. Wow. <laughs> hey, dude. You got me beat by like 70. I'll have you know that is one frame with a nine spare and everything else is strikes. Wow. Yeah. Um, so that nine spare, God, it sucks. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah, my average was 206 in high school. <laughs> That's, Dang, man. We get it, bro, you're good. <laughs> but yeah, I'm not good anymore. I was good, I, I'm like, it was such a weird thing to be. Yeah, uh, you know it would be like riding a bike. Let's do a bowling um, team outing and you can just crush. I don't really, I'm actually not very good anymore. Yeah. Anyway, um, <laughs> and then, and there's, so there's actually two targets in Apple Valley. Um, one of the few places I think that can claim two targets um, other than like, Minneapolis or St. Paul, I guess. Um, and this is like the, very much the uh, older part of Apple Valley is in sort of the northwest and southwest. And it is sort of um, newer. The southeast is the newest portion. Um, northeast is probably the next newest portion. Mm -hmm. um, there, uh, we'll, we'll get into schools here in a second. Alex, um, who's not here, uh, dug into some of that for us. Um, and there's some, there's some cool talking points on schools as well. Um, but a couple things that are pretty great about it is it's a fundamentally equal distance from downtown Minneapolis and downtown St. Paul. Um, you can see right here, uh, for people who aren't from here, uh, I-35, which goes like all the way to Texas, by the way, um, splits off into 35W and 35E right here. Um, and y y so you have really slick access to either one. Um, you could also take Highway 77 over to um, eventually get to 35W. Um, but I think that like, that like even access to both downtowns is like a great, uh, a great asset while also being somewhat insulated from too much highway action. I think we, we talked about that, right? Yeah, yeah, the, really the only like major highway that borders, or that like is a border of Apple Valley is that little section of 35B in the northeast corner. Yeah, northwest corner. Northwest, I keep yeah. missing it. So. <laughs> and, and then yeah, Highway 77 kind of comes into it. Mm -hmm. um, but other than that, you are like, it's quiet. Um, and I think a lot, of, a lot of suburbs don't have that, where they don't have like, some kind of highway running through it um but yeah so anyhow uh very accessible in that regard um and uh let's uh unpit me here um and uh I, real quick i think amber is going to talk about 
Um, like fun stuff for kids to do. Again, let me know if this is something that you want to keep, you know, keep coming. Uh, we're just trying to think of like ways to dive in deeper um, that people will find helpful. Um, and so hopefully um, this is one of them. Uh, I gotta pull up a link here. Oh, it'll be weird, I think. Um, okay, and I think you can go to Amber here. Uh, isn't there a float on top thing? Boy, <laughs> not exactly my best work. Um, isn't there? You don't. It's here and it's not letting me, so I don't know why. Okay, can you hear that? Hello to the yep. Twin Cities fam, how's it going? Speaking of family, today, the segment I'm gonna be talking about is things to do with your kids in Apple Valley. First and foremost, I do wanna say some new products have come in for my kid bag that uh, they have color books, crayons, and a plethora of awesome books. So anytime the kids are there for the showings, uh, for inspection walkthroughs, to the Twin Cities team has stuff to keep them busy. So let's dive in. All right, first one I wanna talk about because I'm just so excited for summer to come around is the Family Aquatic Center and Pool. So typically this is open around June 8th to August 25th. Um, the, it's a huge water park. I mean, huge, it, it's, it's so beautiful. Um, it has outdoor swimming pools. It has a spray ground instead of a playground, a spray ground. Um, this is kind of for all ages where it has just like all types of fountains and things for kids to like run around in and it's a flat area. So parents can kind of hang out nearby. Kids can kind of go play in the little splash zone. Um, they have, um, it has a capacity of about 1600 and um, it has a lazy river tall swirling water slides, the splash pad for all ages, um, concessions. So I remember as a kid wanting to go to, you know, certain beaches or certain um, water parks. And there's just something charming about getting to, you know, go get your, you know, whether it's chips or a soda or candy at the concessions while you're sort of in your swimsuit doing your water park thing. Anyways, very fun. Um, they have uh, multiple pools and even a deep dive pool, which is also really fun. And you can reserve for your kids' birthdays. So that is, uh, that's the first one I'm talking about today. Um, of course, during the summer months only. Um, these other things I wanna talk about are gonna be more year round type stuff. So the next one is the IMAX theater. This is, I don't know if you've ever been to an IMAX theater uh, or if any of you guys have, it is, so such a cool experience and you're kind of like well what's the difference between the IMAX and a regular movie theater so the difference is they have they use high resolution cameras the film formats the film projectors it's um it's a different uh ratio it's uh 1.43 and um these screens also have um it's it's like steep stadium seating and the screens like from top to bottom and then the audio experience is also like super incredible so besides the visuals just sort of consuming all of you the audio is really cool too um i saw a movie there uh, a few years back and i was definitely wowed by just sort of you are in the movie you're in the experience so that is one you could take your kids to. Um, there's a park called Farquhar Park. Um, it's an 11 acre park. It has lake, a fishing pier, a canoe access, um, lots of amenities. Uh, they also include playground equipment, tennis courts, volleyball courts, um, and they have, so if you wanna have like a picnic with your family or like a little reunion or something like that, you can go use those picnic tables. Um, they have, they're like set for groups of like eight to 10 people. So it's a great space to get outside um, any time of year. You can go check this out in the winter. Uh, fall time is always really beautiful with the leaves, but um, yeah, just go check that out. Uh, fourth, we're gonna talk about is Little Orchard Preschool and Family Enrichment. Um, and so, what I love about this, uh, they have a discovery zone, they have a preschool program that um, is kind of play-based interactions and sort of hands-on projects, which I think is really great for kids. Um, and then uh, they say that they foster each child's intellectual, social, and emotional development. Um, they also have family enrichment classes, which 
to have everybody involved, I think is super awesome and important um, to grow together as a family. So they have these parent-child classes and multi-generational -gener events that they can, you know, everyone can join into um, to, to get everyone together and, and learn at the same time. So that is the Little Orchard Preschool and Family Enrichment. Um, we got two more to talk about. We're gonna talk about the Apple Valley Community Center. So they have a family open gym. So they also have a pre-K gym, you know, get, let your kids run off some energy, meet some other kids and just have a great time. The family gym, they have open courts for shooting, playing catch, running, walking laps, uh, pickup games, um, training drills, like that kind of stuff. Um, obviously the adults have to be there to supervise the kids, but this is like a great way. You're kind of cooped up in the winter, go to the open gym with your kids, go play some basketball, run around. It's an awesome time for everybody. Last but certainly not least, um, because I remember attending this Freedom Days summer event when I was a kid, and wow, those memories are burned in. Um, they have, uh, this is in July, um, around the 4th of July, um, multiple day event. They have music in the park. They have an awesome old car show. They have a carnival, oh my gosh, the rides and the cotton candy, so much fun. Um, they have a parade. I definitely remember going to this parade, the candy getting thrown, um, all the different, you know, the trucks and the people and the, the dressed up, you know, sort of like um, mascot people. Uh, anyways, so much fun. So they have a parade. They also have a two or a 5K fun run uh, that you can sign up for. And they have a Cub, Cub Foods, which is one of our big grocery stores here in Minnesota. They have a Cub Foods family day. This includes face painting, big fan of. I remember getting, you know, butterfly on the side of my face. Did you guys ever have anything painted on your face as a child? Uh, if so, what were they? Let us know in the comments. Um, face painting. They have food. They have kids dance. They have tons of games uh, and interactive games and the Apple Valley police and fire and they have snow plow units as well on site. So like you can go into the cop cars, you can go into the fire truck, the check out the snow plows. I mean, what kid doesn't want to get up close and personal in those awesome vehicles? So um, that is the Freedom Days summer event in Apple Valley. Um, go check that out this summer, whether or not you're from Apple Valley or you live there. Um, it's a great event, great way to meet people, uh, get kids involved, and just everyone have a ton of fun. So you guys, uh, throwing it back to you, and let's hear more about Apple Valley. Thanks, Amber. Um, cool. I hope that was helpful. Uh, uh, Matt, thank you for all those very nice comments. Um, we're working on trying to find a house to see, like, show you an example of, you know, family of four, four, three fifty in Apple Valley. It's definitely doable. It is. I was looking at this, uh, prepping for this three fifty is the exact median, uh, price range for there's uh, a few single family homes. Cool. There's, a, there's a few. Yeah. Um, like, uh, so yeah, three fifty is the median. Um, which means there are going to be some under there, you know? Um, but, uh, any lower than 350, I would say it starts to get, uh, your tongue. No, well, there's single family, but it's like generally like the three to 350 range is where you'll maybe find a single family, really no lower than three for sure in, in Apple Valley. Um, occasionally, it, but, but typically under three, it's going to be a, a pretty big project in Apple Valley. Um, and I would say for uh, most sort of like move-in ready homes, 350 is like kind of the starting point. Do you think that's fair to say? Even yeah. though it's the median, um, but realistically, I think that's more of like a starting That's point. across all property types, isn't it? I don't mm -hmm. know. I guess. It actually is for both. Sing I was looking up single family and all property types and around 350 was the median. Interesting. <clears throat> yeah. I suppose a lot of the townhomes are relatively new. Mm -hmm. So it would make sense that, that might, those might be a little higher. Um, so, um, I think, um, I hope Amber's thing was helpful. Um, I think it was, uh, a couple things she talked about that I think were like, I'm like, oh yeah, I like, those were 
those are big. Um, the Aquatic Center, which Nick mentioned as well. Um, I just remember playing the Battle of the Bands there. Um, the IMAX Theater was very sick. Um, that's like in the zoo or like yeah. at the zoo. Mm -hmm. um, which, but I remember like doing midnight showings at IMAX was like the thing that people wanted to do for, um, like Lord of the Rings, the Matrix, and the Matrix. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, um, or other ones people did, like uh, Pirates of the Caribbean. I feel like people okay. did, people did those midnight things. Um, Star but, Wars, Star Wars. Wars. Yeah. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. The prequels. Actually, I think I saw the the redos of the original three. Oh, okay. Like the remasters. In IMAX? I think maybe it wasn't around. I don't remember. Yeah. Is um, the one where they have. Hayden Christensen as Anakin as a fourth force ghost. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> they did a bunch of wacky things. Um, this is the only one. I don't know if y'all can see alley. this, but like these are close. Star Wars poster. Um, nerds. Um, and then uh, yeah, she talked about the community center, which I do remember going to all the time um, as as a kid <clears> playing. <throat> I remember you could like rent a paddle and like ping pong. You could do ping pong there, but basketball was like the basketball. main draw for me. Yeah. So, yeah. As well as like baseball, it's like the, the, one of the main sort of, um, you know, diamonds uh, or like, I don't know, multi, probably like nine fields or something at the community center. And it's right by um, Apple Valley High School, which is the high school Steve and I went to. Shout out. Well, yeah, shout out. And we will dive into schools here in a little bit. But first I want to go to Nick for Nick's picks. I think this one's really fun. Uh, it's been a minute it since I been, did it. It has been a minute. We're back. We're back to We're back. stasis. And it also, makes sense. for our friends looking for the home in Apple Valley, yeah. th there is one in that price range in Apple Valley proper, but there's a few in like Lakeville and like sure. nearby. So currently um, active. Currently yeah. active, yeah. So there's more than one, but yeah, yeah, yeah. No, there's active. <laughs> yeah, there's a handful. <laughs> uh, but yeah, you ready for Nick's picks? I'm ready. Let me know when I'm on. You're on. Cool. Uh, this is for our sub 300. Uh, this one actually went under contract today, so still okay. counts, but <laughs> still <laughs> count it. It's a beauty and you'll see why. Let me pull it up here real quick so I can give you all some stats. Uh, as you can see, this one was listed at 290. It's a two bed, two bath, uh, 1200 and we'll call it 30 square feet. It does have a two car garage. One of the coolest things about this one, in my opinion, the build date, 1885. Wow. Yeah. Old. old yeah. Buckets. Very old. But when you see the inside, the effective age is newer in my opinion. So anyway, good curb appeal, cute little porch here. Um, you can see the beautiful hardwood floors. You've even got some Chevron inlays there, which, you know, you don't see that craftsmanship as much as you used to. Some exposed brick in your chimney. You can see where they sealed it, where they probably had a little stove in the living room way back in the day. Got those signature tall windows that we see in a lot of the old 1800s, early 1900s, and then a small detail, you can see that transom window above the entry. Love that kind of thing in these older homes. They've scraped the ceiling and added some can lighting, so you do have some modern touches throughout, which, um, I mean, it's just a really welcoming home, in my opinion. Got that uh, cool winding staircase, which has carpet on it, but that's fine. It should, have a, it should have a cool runner on it, that's just my opinion. Mm. I mean, it's fine. Yeah, it's, it's fine. fine. It's fine. Uh, continuing on, got kind of a little uh, sunroom here off the back. Yeah, yeah. Plant City, looks like it's probably east facing. And then the kitchen, for a home of this age, is actually very pleasant. That is certainly not original. It has a dishwasher. <laughs> yeah, dishwasher, wow. Yeah, yeah, so. Sweet. And then you've got the standalone island, which in a lot of these older homes, you'll see a lot, just because they weren't designed the way that they are these days. That's probably on the, that, that space is on the smaller side for sure, too. Yeah. It doesn't look so like it so much in the pictures. The fisheye lens. That's a small kitchen. Yeah, <clears throat> but, but nice. gets it done. Very nice. Um, got the pendant lights, too, a nice little touch. Got one of our bathrooms here. These bedrooms are likely on the upper level and they're probably not huge, but uh, given that the house is only 1,230 square feet, but you can see it's nice and clean. I would say the windows have certainly been replaced, mm -hmm. uh, yet they've kept a lot of the original trim. Good closet space for a home of this age. Good looking bathroom. Yeah, good looking bathroom. Clean basement. Love Clean that. basement. Like a and, super old house. Yeah, and it actually looks like the <coughs> ceiling height down there is pretty ample. 
a lot of these homes, especially 1900 and, and earlier, you'll have like a damp crawl space at best. Mm -hmm. So to actually low. have an excavated basement here for that age of home is kind of rare. Nice yeah. little deck off the back. Where is this one? This is near Como Park. Okay. So just south of Lake Como in St. Paul, north of Hamlin Midway and Frogtown. Nice location. Yeah. Beautiful yard, got some trees and a two car garage. Basketball uh, hoop is included. Dog. Dog, I'm telling you. <clears throat> That's what I like to call a banger for a starter home. Uh, under 300. To Steve's point earlier, I, I would imagine that it went a little over 300, but mm -hmm. you know, for a listing price, I think that that's a lot of house and a good yard and a garage. Great pick. Yeah, thank you. Um, so moving over to the next one, we have a beautiful, just amazing mid-century home in New Hope. Oh. This one's actually coming soon. Uh, listed by this Jesse Lynch guy that I feel like we know this this guy. <laughs> yeah. So shameless plug here. Uh, 5931 Wisconsin Circle coming soon. Talk about a showstopper. My God. Yeah. Are you mic'd yeah, up, Jess? Sure. I am mic'd up. Let's hear it, man. This is yours. <clears throat> I mean, I, there's a whole video on this on this particular house on this channel. If you uh, haven't seen those yet, this is the most recent one. I love this place. Um, Sweet Pea was there with me. Um, such a cool house. The owners have taken just outstanding care of it um, and updated it in a way that I think is just like very uh, true to mid-century design um, while also making it like modern, right? They opened up a whole, a whole wall that separated off the kitchen. Um, that alone, like that's like the update of updates in in, in any house um tons of natural light yeah and i love one thing if you go back to the where there's that like transom window yeah you can kind of see it on the left of on, on that here i'll uh, bop back over okay yeah so it's a split entry i grew up on a split entry uh but that window over the door and the fact that there's the, the two windows on both sides of the door that, that window is, over the door is giant yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it is literally giant and also giant in terms of the amount of light that's in. A lot of these split entry homes are, um, they're dark in that entryway. Mm. You know, dude, our, yeah, our, ours was like totally dark. Um, and uh, that I think that's like just such a, uh, a cool part of that home. I believe that's original to the home. It at least was on there when these buyers bought it. Um, it's also a two owner home, so they've, like the original owners and now the people who have done these renovations who I think have been incredible stewards of this home uh, Backyard is so sweet. Look at those railings. Oh, I love the railings um, I was like are these original, you know, or did y'all did like go out of your way to find these? And they're like no, these were original um, and they're beautiful and the furnishings have really kept it you know yeah nice homage to its original they know what's up the, the the you know the light fixtures stay right so I love that those light fixtures are you know like hip and they, they did kind of that like a there's like a swankiness to their updates um which i think is very true to mid-century um uh, design check right? out that penny tile backsplash come on wow. yep yeah and they uh, uh matt matt says the ceiling beam is gorgeous ah the ceiling beam is huge and the, the transom windows on the side of the house is so mid-century you don't see that very often in minnesota no i call the these triangle. the uh, the california style these like horizontal oh, ones yeah. i love yeah. those i mentioned that in the video where all the light with the privacy yep yeah, you get the privacy uh you can put a bed with a headboard up against a window wall and it doesn't become this like very awkward situation a uh, huge fan of that access to the patio off of this bedroom here off the primary which is the primary suite has a beautiful uh bedroom or beautiful bathroom in the primary suite four bed two bath two car garage shop space behind the garage um really nice updated bathroom um you know that's the primary bathroom it's it's sweet i love a three-quarter bath in a primary i think a lot of people do as well it's clean that's the hallway bath um yeah i don't know hope i'm not going too fast here. no it's good yeah it's good um the uh i love the basement really really cool basement the fireplace down there um super cool yeah look at that i that's love a nice that fire photo. yeah go back go back one that's yeah so sharp they that brick is painted i love that layout very mid-century uh fireplace layout where the the um i don't know what do you call it why can't i think of the word the hearth Meh. Words escape me. 
I was doing pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think it's, it's just a really nice uh, finish of that uh, of that basement. There's a, a very clean uh, laundry room down there. No photos. Look at that cozy little family room down there. Yeah, great like movie night spot um, and and good size down there. You know, it's, it's a it's and a, the tile in the hallway down there matches the split level entry, which is just so sick. Yep. Um, yeah. No pictures of the laundry room. Um, Beautiful yeah. backyard, patio space. Uh, patio furniture, negotiable in the sale. Um, <laughs> and it is, it's huge. Um, like the, the current patio furniture, you could fit, I don't know, 12 people out there? It's like a sectional. Yeah, Something like huge. that. Yeah, it's huge. Um, and let's talk about the curb appeal. I love that curb appeal. Mm, come on, man. Yeah. Um, during the summer, too. It's beautiful. I've actually, I like know these people. I've been there in the summer. Um, it's just a, it's a beautiful You've spot. You've got the updated address plaque. Yeah, yeah. They've done a great job. And this is all for only 360,000. 360,000 dollar price. It's at the end of a cul-de-sac. Uh, if you were to look at like the, the map situation of it, it's like in a very quiet, tucked in spot in, in New Hope. It's like, a block from like a lake park maybe a block uh, yeah probably about a block from this like really great walking path and lake um, very private feeling down there awesome neighbors um uh, yeah they it, you know i don't know it's just got a lot going for it i'm glad that's on next picks um i think even if it wasn't our listing it would have been on next picks. yeah oh yeah open house this weekend saturday Come 12 through. to 2 i'll we'll be there. See you there i might be there sweet and if you're interested in a showing, reach out to any of us or the man himself, Jesse Lynch. Absolutely. If um, uh, Matt said, uh, I'm going to be showing this to my wife, do you know what schools it's zoned for? It's zoned for uh, Robbinsdale schools. Um, I don't know specifically what, uh, like what schools it serves, um, but yeah, Robbinsdale schools. Um, yeah, a lot of value. Um, that said, I did mention a place that we have over 20. As we were sitting here, I got three more showing requests. So it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a busy one. Um, and you know, uh, yeah, it, it's a cool spot. That design, oh. it, it's hard to come by that design often. Mid-century yeah. comes with a premium, especially yeah. when they look like that. When it's well done. Well yeah. done. Totally. Nice job to the homeowners and Jesse. All right, moving on to our <laughs> 550 to 750,000 price tier. We have this beautiful home in Bloomington. This is a five bed, three bath, 2,945 square feet. It's a beauty. So we'll just kind of cycle through some of these. This is coming soon. Let's see if there's any other data to add. 0.36 acres, so it is on a very large lot. Uh, Bloomington School District. So we'll just kind of go through some of these. I just really love this house. I think. A lot of the updates were very tasteful. Beautiful. What's the build date on this? 1968. So very similar. The last one was 63. So kind of sticking in the 60s today. Beautiful hardwood floors. I love the navy blue wall. Uh, it doesn't hurt when people have good taste in furnishings and artwork. Can lights. Love that. Yep. Can yeah, lights. You got the electric fireplace, with I'm, which I'm actually a big fan of because you can get a larger TV and lower the mantle. Just me. <laughs> or you could put a huge, uh, is yours a Samsung frame, Jesse? It is a Samsung frame. They make large frame Samsung frames. frame TVs, so it just allows more room for that. Yeah. Uh, beautiful renovated kitchen with the island. Everyone loves the island. Great for gathering around. We've got the quartz counters. White shaker cabinets. Nice fridge. Pendant lights. What's not to like? Little dining area there. And we've got this... Uh, uh, I'm not sure, three, we'll call it a three season, season porch yeah. that's actually pretty huge. Also got some can lights, they're not recessed, they're kind of like 90s can lights, but got the little uh, little tiki bar there and kind of some of that uh, composite looks like paneling yeah, in the bottom. The floor. Definitely not real pavers, but it is a vibe of that room for sure. Yeah, that's cool. And it has a little uh, gas yeah, heater there it looks like. Yeah. So maybe, maybe that is finished square footage actually. Spend time out there. Maybe not in the coldest days, but yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's a sweet house. Yeah, it's really nice. What's it list at? This is at 639. Okay, is it uh, Western Bloomington or? Let me have a look on the map here. Yeah. One moment. All good. Uh, let's see. Da, 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 da. 
Uh, yeah, I think so. It's just on the eastern side of France, like by two blocks. Would that be East Bloomington? Um, I actually don't know. Exactly. Or would you say Normandale is, is the dividing line? I think, I think it's Normandale a little bit yeah, more. Yeah, I think Normandale. So it's East I, Bloomington. I think of West Bloomington. I think of anything west of Normandale. Yeah. Um, school districts might say otherwise. They've uh, just got a vibey accent wall yeah. on every one of these rooms. That's a beautiful house for sure. Good looking list. It is. And this is one of my favorite parts. Wet the family way. room, finished basement with the wet bar. Big. Yeah, huge. Huge. And look at that. Just really tasteful. That wallpaper? That's, that's tile, dude. I'd be surprised if that's wallpaper. It looks like tile to me. It does look like tile, but why would you, why would you tile a whole wall? But it looks nice. Because they can. <laughs> <laughs> Purely as a flex. And they didn't take photos of it, but you can see that clean laundry room hiding back there. Oh, dude. It's even got tile. You see that? You got some subway. Love we love a clean laundry room. Modern railing with the retaining wall. Beautiful walkout. Uh, I think you'd call this a rambler. Oh, You'd yeah. call that a rambler, yeah? Yeah, dude, walk out. Yeah. Rambler, that's like my house. Yeah. Except not it's just a lot more interesting than, nice than a lot of them. You don't see a lot of like a second gable on those on the front. Yeah. You true. know, that's kind of what threw me. Anyway, really big fan of that one. Uh, we're going to bop back over into the city's proper here. We're going to be in Highland Park, St. Paul. Mm. This is going to be our 750000 to a million price tier. Rick. Yeah, timeless. We've got a three bed, four bath, uh, just shy of 2,900 square feet here. Three car garage. This is built in 1942, uh, 0.14 acre lot. This is actually just north of Ford Parkway uh, in that kind of commercial district, if you want to call it that. Is it west of Cleveland? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I love it's that. It's north of the Lifetime down there. Yeah, I love that little area. Like right off of Finn Street. Yeah, I've looked at a lot of really beautiful homes right there. Ah, I love it. Yeah, she's a beauty. They've kept a lot of the natural uh, character elements, haven't changed a ton. You've got this little office sunroom. Did you say the year built? Uh, 42. Okay. Which is funny because we were talking earlier about <laughs> how so funny, yeah. you didn't yeah. see a lot of homes built <laughs> during the war. So. Yeah. Oh, did you know right over there off Ford Parkway uh, used to house, uh, I think, Ford workers? and then I, But I believe before that, um, folks who were working for Ford in uh, war efforts. Because of Fort Snelling being right there, maybe? No, because of the Ford factory. Oh, yeah, Ford was sense. making military stuff. Yeah, Fort Snelling mm -hmm. had been used uh, a lot am I thinking? Um, during World War II. Cool little office room, though. You've got the exposed brick, which is actually the exterior. It's not a chimney, which is rare. It's usually always a chimney. Beautiful kitchen. Got a huge fridge and an actual dedicated pantry space, as you can see in the corner there. I think that's a Sub-Zero. Probably, and they've got a pretty robust range there. Yeah, it looks like a wolf or something. Oh, right? Yeah, it's a wolf. yeah, they've definitely got a premium appliance suite. You can see the oversized tile there, and as much as I love a white kitchen, I just am a sucker for some beautiful wood grain. And this is not, no offense to anybody that has this, but the uh, late '80s, early '90s. Not, uh, not my favorite. Honey oak. Yeah, the honey oak or the orange oak. Not my Wait, favorite. Honey oak. Yeah. Hey, man, I grew up in a kitchen like that. Just a gorgeous house. And it's huge as well, just shy of 3,000 square feet. So you've got a little uh, kind of mudroom there out to the back. Dining, another sunroom situation. You can see a powder room there off the kitchen. Again, that exterior brick. That's so cool that they do those additions and kept like the yeah, yeah. the facade, not the facade, but yeah, the actual exterior. Yeah, 100%. I agree. A little awesome. skylight hiding there. Now to the upstairs, you've got some really good sized bedrooms. Um, Got a walk-in closet here with an ensuite. Something that you don't see a ton in the cities unless people have spent some pretty good money to make it so. But yeah, as you can see, a lot of oversized bedroom spaces. And then another rarity in the cities is gonna be this beautiful finished family room with the can lights. That was definitely done uh, not too long ago, probably you know within the last 20 years. Uh, one thing that I also really liked about this house is you'll see here, Two Clean laundry room. Two of them. Oh. So this, I would guess, is probably upstairs somewhere. Yeah. And then this is the basement laundry, mm. which is nice. And it's a large house, so if you've got a lot of people living in there, nice to be able to have laundry on multiple floors. Tankless water heater. Those things cost a fortune, and everyone I know that has one really likes them. And you can see that the furnace is quite new. A little workshop. And then this was actually one of my favorite parts as well. 
You've got a detached three-car garage that has really been tricked out. This is something that you'd see in the likes of Woodbury or Eden Prairie, where people just love their garages. You've got the epoxy floor, and you've got an additional oh. bonus space upstairs. Yoga studio. Not quite an ADU because there's no kitchen or bathroom, but you never know. So I was a big fan of that. That looks great. Yeah, really sick house, and then you've got the patio out back. And a small yard, so if you do have a dog um, or kids, there's some, <laughs> there's some grass there. <laughs> I guess. As you can see there. And you could maybe even expand the railing. They, they kind of cut it short, but I really love this house. Yeah, that's a beautiful house. And, and the area, you know, it's love it. Highland. Highland Park is awesome. You can see actually here to the south, uh, just a little uh, snippet of the development going on at the old Fork Park, yeah. Ford Parkway area. So yeah. no, I think Ford it's a good Park. spot to buy because of that. I looked at I looked at a town uh, townhouse there actually. Um, yeah, it's a very very cool spot. For sure. <laughs> um, yeah, it's it's um, there's like that new that the Lunds and Byerleys moved, um, and so now there's like a brand new Lunds and Byerleys over there. Super super nice. Um, yeah, the there's there's like a that's it's such a such an interesting spot uh, where you'll you have townhomes, condos. I think there's even like 55 plus condos over there. Mm -hmm. um, and then they're doing like all the lots like along the river are like. Uh, Go the, the, like it's not like only one builder is building them. Like Pulte's building the townhomes. Um, by the way, they're crazy, dude. They're like a lot of them are like three stories um, with like a rooftop deck. Um, they're wild. Um, but then the lots along the river with like awesome views. You can also see uh, Mississippi River or er, Mississippi Lock and Dam Number One um, from right there, which is a, a cool spot. Um, but the homes that are being built there are being built by like all different builders. Um, so like custom homes being built along there, not just, you know, let's say Pulte, just putting in a bunch of the same looking home, which I think- Spec homes. Yeah, I think that will really um, make that area particularly cool. And yeah, there's all sorts of like interesting irrigation and stuff that they've already done, like interesting, you know, uh, Water features and, and stuff like that in that in that little area um, worth checking out if you are uh, Nearby, but you got one more pick, right? I got one more. and I'm really pumped about it <laughs> Hit it. Are we on my own? Yep. Sweet. <laughs> <laughs> I saw this today and I was just really excited about it. So this is a massive duplex in South Minneapolis in the Standish neighborhood it is an eight bed, eight bath. So count them up. That's four beds and four baths per unit, side by side, which is hard to come by. This is just shy of $1.3 million. So she's spending, but 5,400 square feet. This was just completed recently in 2023, two car garage. So contemporary modern design from the outside, you can see it looks pretty awesome. And just everything you would love about an open floor plan. It's almost like owning two tricked out townhomes, really. True, yeah. This is something that you would typically see in the likes of Linden Hills or Fulton. Yeah. But uh, you don't really see these very often, so I just thought I'd show y'all. Yeah, um, there's some new builds going in in like uh, like Longfellow, like Cooper and Howe. Um, looked at one of those relatively recently. Um, Single like, family? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, nothing like this. I haven't seen any of those. I know which ones you're talking about. There's um, a very particular style that I think the city has stamped off on because they all look very similar. Yeah, kind of boxy. Yeah. Tall. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But cool. They look yep. very sharp. Porches, usually like a little front porch situation. That looks beautiful. It's ridiculous. Are the two sides mirrors of each other? Yeah. Okay. Finishes are different, but they're mirror images. That's cool. Yeah, it's awesome. And yeah. it does have a two car garage. So one for each unit. And then I would imagine you could probably add a parking pad. I will say one for each unit is an interesting. I know, I almost figured for that price, you should have just built a four car personally, but. Four baths, yeah, four baths. And yeah, one, one throw an ADU off. back there, why not? <laughs> yeah. Four baths. So you four can see baths. the finishes are a little bit different here. They went for the kind of farmhouse tile versus the uh, modern textured subway. But great kitchen space, super open. Looks like they've got vinyl plank floors, but kind of like a light oak looking imitation. 
This one's vacant, obviously it doesn't have any furniture, but more or less the same. Sure. I'm just a geek for multifamily, and this is probably one of the nicer ones I've seen in a while. Finished basement, can lighting, another bathroom, and then like a guest room or office. And there's your garage. Mm. Yeah. yeah, the bathroom to garage ratio is just... I know, interesting. I think a four car would have been more appropriate, but I will also say, uh, as I live nearby, this area of South Minneapolis has larger lots. This was built on 0.17 acres, which I would definitely say is above average for the city. Mm. Um, so yeah. Cool. Sweet. That's all I've got for you. Sweet. All right. <laughs> Uh, we're going to talk about schools now in Apple Valley. That was a little bit of a departure, but yeah, now we're going to dive. No, that's all good. Um, uh, <laughs> maybe we should. Yeah, probably. Maybe I should. I'm maybe. usually last. Um, <laughs> the uh, schools in Apple Valley are, a, I think, a big attractor to the area. Um, Steve and I both came from it. We are obviously outstanding people. <laughs> um, and. Uh, I think I had a very good experience. Um, obviously, I'm fairly removed from it now. My my nephew, however, just graduated from Apple Valley High School. He had a great experience. Very well well rounded young man. Um, and yeah, uh, very much enjoyed his time there. Played hockey, played varsity hockey. You know, they're not going to be uh, winning state. You know, like often, but it's like he maybe got in to wrestling. Play. Yeah, actually. There's, there is some interesting stuff in athletics, but that was specific to Apple Valley High School. There's also Eastview High School, which is a newer, um, yeah, a newer school in Apple Valley. That's going to be more in that northeastern corner of Apple Valley, where there's much newer homes and, frankly, bigger homes. Um, it's like it's a more slightly more affluent section of Apple Valley um, that is served by Eastview. The western side, the older side of Apple Valley is served by Apple Valley, or by, yeah, by Apple Valley High School. Um, Eagles and Lightning, yeah. right? Eastview Lightning. Um, so, uh, and it's Independent School District 196, ISD 196, um, that serves Apple Valley. It also serves Rosemont, Egan, um, as well as uh, parts of Burnsville. It serves parts of Lakeville. It even serves like um, Coates, you know, like the township in the. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, there's actually a cool map that we can look at. Um, yeah, maybe let's look at that now. Um, this is. I, I, I wish I could find this for every school. Maybe you can, but um, this is sort of a district map uh, of Independent School District 196. You can see kind of here uh, the green stars are high schools. Um, and so like this is specifically Apple Valley. So it's mostly this sort of section right here that is all Apple Valley. And then this side is Rosemont where it gets a, a, quite a bit more uh, rural as you get out to the east. Um, you can see uh, the star at 30 and 32. 30 is Apple Valley High School. 32 is um, Eastview High School. Um, and then 34 is the School of Environmental Studies, mm. um, aka SES, aka the Zoo School. Um, School of Environmental Studies is, uh, we talked about this in the virtual tour, but if you haven't watched it yet, a very, uh, it's the only school of its kind in Minnesota. Um, there might be, there probably are others nat nationally, um, but it's very much a, a school, it's like a, a different learning style, right? I remember like those kids felt like aliens a little bit to me. Um, where they'd be like, oh yeah, we learned like this. And I was like, what? That seems so wild. Um, but a lot of, I think, very bright kids went there. Um, and uh, yeah, it, it's a little more... Um, interdisciplinary, I think is how I remember it. Interdisciplinary, that, yeah, that's a good way of saying it. Um, and, uh, you know, like you would spend time in nature more you know like they would go outside uh for their classes um way more than we did at Apple valley um maybe went outside to get to a portable <laughs> at Apple valley um but yeah and, and it's obviously like um connected to the zoo so they had access to those kind of things um it's a bit yeah anyway it's a very cool school um that uh people seem to speak very highly of um yeah, this, uh, this is just a, an interesting uh, website um, 
that I think people might find interesting. Um, but you can see over here, parts of Burnsville as well are served by Apple Valley High School, um, 30 over here, and it's like this kind of, right around 35W, 35E, a lot of those kids went to Apple Valley High School. Um, and likewise with Lakeville. Some of my very good friends growing up were from this like Lakeville section. Um, okay, I think you can unpit me. Um, so, um, some of the, the elementary schools in Napa Valley are Greenleaf, Highland, Westview, uh, El, uh, Southview, which is where Steve and I went. Shouts out Southview. Um, middle school, uh, you have Diamond Path, you have Falcon Ridge, and you have Valley Middle School. Steve and I went there, um, which is connected, which is now a STEM school. Yeah, it is STEM school now, uh, but it is still connected to Southview. Yep, yeah, connected to Southview. I used to walk to middle school. Did you walk to middle school? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So did my mom, uh, first grade teacher at Southview for like 20 years. Oh. Shout out, mom. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out Steve's mom, Mrs. <clears throat> Wilk. Um, the, uh, it did receive, uh, Independent School District 196 did receive um, Blue Ribbon Schools Program Award, um, considered the highest accolade an American school uh, can receive. Um, and uh, it also has high in diversity. It's the 22nd most diverse public high school in Minnesota, which definitely was not when we went. Correct. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but anecdotally, I remember it. Not yeah. Being <laughs> yeah. Super. Yeah. Nervous. I mean, maybe at, maybe at the time it was, but um, yeah. So um, it rated very highly on Niche.com. Overall grade of an A. Um, it also Apple Valley fit into a video that I did a, quite a while back, which was uh, best affordable school districts in Minnesota. Um, which all I did was take median sale price of single family homes and uh, school schools and school districts that like had a B, I think it was a B or better um, on niche and I think a seven or better on greatschools.org. I had to like really capture a lot of, a lot of info. Um, but Apple Valley was, it just barely made the list but it, because it was the most expensive in the affordable range, but 350 is like right at the median of the Twin Cities, you know, single family homes. Um, and so I would say that it qualifies as relatively affordable. Um, when it comes to athletics, you have the Apple Valley Eagles, again, where Steve and I went. Um, it, uh, interesting, um, there are some like quite notable names who have come from Apple Valley. Um, in its 47 years, this is just uh, something um, Alex pulled, which I think is interesting. In its 47 years, Apple Valley High School has captured 600, or, sorry, 63 Minnesota State High School League Athletic State Championship titles in every year since 1982, uh, since the 1982 and 1983 school year, the Eagles have captured at least one state athletic championship. Nice. Yeah, dude. Did not know that. Um, <laughs> but uh, I think when we were going, wrestling was big. Huge. Um, they won, like, I want to say somewhere in the neighborhood of 10. Consecutive, yeah. right? Yeah. Wrestling was, was a, a huge if program. If not more after we left. Because I know, because I, <clears throat> one of my buddy, close friends uh, was on the wrestling team. Um, and so I was kind of like, you know, kept abreast of it through him. But yeah, it continued on after we were into college and beyond that, you know, they just kept winning state titles. So yeah, it was yeah. a huge program yeah, for that, wrestling. Pretty well, I remember kids were moving from other states mm -hmm. and as not a wrestler, I was like, what? <laughs> you know, <laughs> for what? Um, but uh, yeah, they finished top three in, uh, state events uh, 118 times in 126 athletic seasons. Okay, pretty wild. Um, uh, da, 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 da. The uh, uh, Apple Valley High School ranks first in the state of Minnesota um, in terms of state championships won in the arts and athletics. Again, that's crazy stuff that like even having gone there, didn't like, did not realize that stuff. Um, the uh, notable alumni, Trey and Tyus Jones, who are now NBA players for the Spurs and Grizzlies, respectively. Tyus Jones is a former Timberwolf. Um, Gable Stevenson? Apple Stevenson, I think. Oh, okay. Maybe he just missed an N. 
uh, <laughs> but uh, Olympic gold medalist wrestler. Oh yeah. Um, the several NFL players, Eric Westrom, uh, played for the Phoenix Coyotes, the Minnesota Wild, the Toronto Maple Leafs, Mike Lundeen, um, and NHL defenseman, played for the Wild, several Olympians, professional athletes, actors and act actresses, Vincent Carthizer. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. The dude from Mad Men? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's from Apple Valley. Yeah, class of 1997. I remember some kid in, uh, who was in, uh, what's the hockey movie? This Mighty is Ducks? Shame on me. Mighty Ducks 3 uh, went to Apple Valley. I think my mom drove a bus for him back in the day. Oh, um, sick. But yeah, anyhow, um, great schools in Minnesota, uh, or in, in Apple Valley. Um, kind of regardless of which one you go to, is we're going to have very high, high ratings. And uh, yeah, we have no more questions, um, but I just want to say thank you for watching. I think we'll wrap this thing up and we will see you in the next one. And uh, as always, if you want to work with us, to the twin cities.com or you can go to uh, just shoot us an email directly to info at to the twin cities.com. Uh, check out the, the videos that we just put out both on Apple Valley but also the home tour videos. We're going to keep those coming and hopefully give you a very robust look at you know what money uh, affords you what homes in different areas. So appreciate you watching. See you in the next one. Happy Bye. birthday, Mom. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday, Bradford Mrs. and Mrs. Wilk.